Welcome back for another tutorial. Our topic for today is about inductive reasoning. So let's define first what is an inductive reasoning. So it makes broad generalization from specific observations. So for example, you're, you're in a certain daycare center and then you notice that the children there likes to play a Lego or Legos. And then you assume or you come up with a conclusion that all children likes to play Lego. That's only based from your observations. Now, another defi definition for inductive reasoning, scientists use it to form hypotheses and theories. Next, inductive reason reasoning is also known as a valid guess. And it allows for the conclusion to be false. And then conclusion form is called a conjecture. So, yung inductive reasoning may mga times na hindi tama yung makakam-up up mo na conjecture o yung, o yung conclusion. Conjecture yung tinatawag na conclusion sa nakuha mong idea sa isang inductive reasoning. So, the idea may or may not be correct. So, hindi pa laging tama. Depende yan kung paano mo nakam up yung reasoning na nakuha mo or based sa iyong observations. Pero mas maintindihan natin kung ano yung inductive reasoning in terms of mathematics in the modern world. Let's answer this example number one. So, ins ang instruction ay use inductive reasoning to predict the next number. So, sa ating first problem or example, letter A, which is the given number, the series of numbers are 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, and 12. And then, hahanapin natin ano yung kasunod na number after ng 12. So, kung mapapansin nyo, ang mga numbers na to are even numbers. So, meaning, ang kasunod ng 12 ay 14. So, based sa ating observation, each successive numbers are an even number. So, each... So, therefore, the next number after 12 will, will be number 14. So, ito yung answer natin for our example number 1, letter A. So, for our next example, which is the example 1B, meron na naman tayong series of numbers dito. And then, we're going to find the next number after the 20, 125. So, the series of numbers are 1, 8, 27, 64, 125, and the next is an unknown. So, if you notice, these numbers are not an even number. Hindi rin naman siya add number kasi meron siyang 64. Meron din namang 8. So, hindi rin naman siya prime number kasi meron namang factors more than 1 ang 8, 64, and 125. So, kung mapapansin nyo, halos wala silang pagkakapareho. Walang pattern dito sa ating series of numbers. So, ang ginagawa ko dito, inahanap ko yung difference from an the first number to the second number hanggang sa ating last na given number sa series na to. So, kung mapapansin nyo, pag 1 to 8, 8 minus 1, minus natin 8 minus 1 is 7. So, 7 ang difference nito, kaya ilalagay lang natin na ganito. And then, for 27 and 8, minus 27 minus 8 is equals to 19. And then, 64 minus 27 is 37 and then 125 minus 64 is 61 so kung mapapansin nyo sa nakuha nating difference between this series of numbers wala pa rin tayong pwedeng ma-connect or kung may similarity ang bawat numbers kasi 7, 19, 37, 61 masyadong malayo ang pagitan ng mga numbers so let's try to find its difference again so, for 19 minus 7, minus 7, 19 minus 7 will be 12. And then, 37 minus 19 is 18. And then, 61 minus 37 is 24. Kung mapapansin, kung titignan nyo, let's observe these numbers. 12, 18, and 24. Diba? Ang 12, mag-add ka lang ng 6, magiging 18. And then, 18 plus 6 na naman will be 24. So, meron na silang common... Point. Like example, this one is 6, the difference of 6, and then this one, 6 naman ang difference nila. So, ibig sabihin, ang kasunod ng 24 ay mag a ka lang ng 6. So, ibig sabihin, 24 plus 6 is equals to 30. So, yan. Meaning, 
Kung 30 to, ang next na number sa 61 ay mag add ka lang ng 30. Okay, for this number, di ba 37 plus 24 is 61. Therefore, ang kasunod na 61, 61 plus 30, which means it is 91. Ibig sabihin, ang number na kasunod ng 125 ay mag add mo lang ang 125 plus 91. So, 125 plus 91 is equals to 216. So, yan na ngayon ang hinahanap nating number. Ito na yun yung next number sa ating series of numbers. Based sa ating inductive reasoning, paano yung way na ginamit natin and based sa ating observations, which is 666 ang last, ang pagitan ng mga numbers, ang difference, nakakam up tayo ng answer na 216 na next number. Ito yung predictions natin. Now, for example number 2, make a conjecture between the relationship of the size of the resulting number and the size of the original number. So, gagami gagamitin din natin yung inductive reasoning to come up with a conclusion about these procedures na given sa atin. Example, so num letter A, Pick a number. So, mag kukuha, any number will do. So, suppose we pick number 5 as the original number. So, letter A, 5, orig original number. And then, for letter B, multiply the number by 10. So, 5 times 10. So, which is equals to 50. Now, for letter C, add 8 to the product. So, yung product natin, which is 50, mag-add lang tayo ng 8 which is equal to 58. Now, for letter D, divide the, divide the sum by 2. So, yung sum, which is the 58, divided by 2. 58 divided by 2, which is equals to 29. Now, for letter E, the last procedure, subtract 4 and subtract 4. Subtract 4 from our quotient, which is the 29. So, 29 minus 4, which is 25. So, ito na ang tinatawag nating the resulting number. Based sa original number, ang ating napili na kanina, which is 5, and then the size of the resulting number, which is 25. So, kung mapapansin nyo, times 5 ang laki ng, or, ng ating resulting number kaysa sa ating original number, which is 5. So, 5 times 5 is equal to 25. Pwede natin gawing conclusion yon pero let's again try another number. Okay, suppose we pick another number, um, number 10. So, tignan natin kung anong mangyayari kung yung makakam up ba nating solution is same pa rin sa ating naging first na conclusion, which is 5 times the original number. Now, for 10, we pick a number and then multiply the number by 10. So, 10 times 10, which is 100. And then, add 8 to the product. 100 plus 8 is equals to 108. And then, divide the sum by 2. So, 108 divided by 2, which is equals to 54. And then, subtract 4. 54 minus 4 is equals to 50. Now, if you, observe, if you will observe, from the original number to the resulting number, times 5 pa rin ang, ang laki, ang size ng ating resulting number kesa sa ating original number. So, pwede natin tong i-conclude that The given procedure produces a number that is 5 times the original number. So, so isusulat ko na lang dito ang ating conjecture o ang ating nakuhang conclusion based sa ating observation. So, therefore, the given, the given procedure, yung procedure na to, yung A to E, given procedure produces a number that is 5 times the original number. So, yan na. Ito na ngayon ang ating nakuhang inductive reasoning. So, given the procedure, given procedure produces a number that is 5 times the original number. Yan ay based sa ginamit nating number 5 at saka number 10 kan ngayon. Yung number 5 kanina and then number 10 ngayon which is 5 times the original number. Now, for our last example, for our inductive reasoning topic, let's try to answer this example number 
So, if you'll notice na iba, may ano tayo dito, parang series of numbers, pero in, parang in equation siya. So, 11 times 1 times 101 is equals to 1,000 or 111. So, apat na 1. And then, next, 11 times 2 one, times 101 is equals to 2,222 and so on. So, we are tasked to find the answer for this now, sa unang tingin pa lang, kung mapapansin nyo, ang mga answers natin dito pa lang sa first, or sa first number, sa first equation, which is 1, 1, 1, 2, 2, 2, and then 3, 3, 4, 5. So, kung mapapansin natin, kahit hindi na tayo mag-calculate, magamit ng calculator, hindi na natin ito itatimes or multiply, lalabas na ang answer natin, or magkukonclude na ako na ang answer will be 6,666. So, Dito ay base sa ating mga naunang given. So, kahit ikakalcute to, 11 times 6 times 101 is equal to 6,666. So, based dito sa ating given na numbers, pwede tayo mag-conclude or, mag or gagawa ng conjecture based sa ating observation. So, we can conclude that the product of 11 times n times 101 is a number where, where all digits are equal or the same. ba Kung mapapansin nyo, ang nagbabago lang naman dito sa ating equation are, ay ang nasa gitna, which is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So, pag sa mathematics, ba ang ginagawa natin, naglalagay tayo ng let n. Ang n kasi, pwede magbago ang numbers niya. So, pwede 1, 2, 3, 4, and then constant din lang din naman ang 11 and 101. Kahit Kahit pa nag 7, 8, 9, and 10. And then, ang, pabago, ang nagbabago lang ay ang nasa gitna na number. So, ilet lang natin yan as N. Na ngayon, kung ang conjecture natin or yung conclusion natin na yung magiging answer ay katulad pa rin ito, like same-same ang lumalabas ay pare-pareho. So, ibig sabihin, kung ganun yung conclusion ko na all digits are equal or same digits ang answer ng ating, uh, ang ating magiging product, Ibig sabihin, ang 7, ang 11 times 7 times 101 will be 7, 7, 7, 7, 7, 4 na 7. Now, however, kapag magiging 10 tong N natin, how, how about kapag magiging 10 to? So, magiging 11 times 10 times 101. So, iba na yung magiging sagot. Magiging 1, 1, 1, 1, 11,110. 11,110. So, based dito sa ating nakuwang sagot ngayon, kapag let n is equals to 10, ibig sabihin, hindi na valid yung ating conjecture o yung conclusion. Ibig sabihin, hindi na siya tama. So, hindi na, hindi dapat nagagamitin natin na we can conclude that the product is the, the, where all digits are equal. Hindi na ganun kasi ang 10 kapag 10 ang lalagay natin sa n magiging 11,110 so hindi na siya lahat 1 tinanong niyo may may zero na siya sa dulo. So obviously kung ang conclusion natin or yung conjecture na nagawa natin kanina which is na ang mga answer ay dapat all dapat ang mga digits ay pare-pareho hindi na applicable ngayon so hindi na siya tama so hindi na ganun. So, mali na ang ating magiging conjecture. ba kanina sinabi natin na all digits, all digits of the product are the same. So, based dito, kapag gagawin natin 10, ang ating n, maging 11,110. So, 11,110. So, hindi na pareho. So, dito sa ginawa ko na Bagong equation, which is that 11 times 10 times 101 is equals to 11,110. Dahil sa ginawa kong to, na-disprove ko yung conclusions na ginamit ko kanina or ginawa ko kanina. Which means na hindi na tama yung ating conclusion. So, ibig sabi, ang tawag dito, ang tawag sa pag-disprove ng isang situation or equation gamit ang mga example like na gumamit tayo ng 10, ay ang, ta ang tawag dito ay counter example. So, ang counter example, gagawa ko ng another video. Just try to check it out kung ano, ano yung meaning ng counter example and how to use numbers on how to counteract or yung i-disprove mo yung mga equations or yung na-come up na certain conclusion sa isang situation. So, sa mga ganitong 
type of problem, nagkakamali minsan ang ating mga naka, nagagawang mga conjecture. So, be aware lang kasi sa inductive reasoning, may mga times talaga na magiging false ang ating conjecture or yung conclusion natin. Kasi masyadong broad yung nakukuha natin. So, nagbibase lang tayo kung ano yung na-observe natin. Tapos, nagkukonclude na tayo agad. So, sa mga ibang author, sinasabi nila na ang tawag sa inductive reasoning ay pag ginagamit mo to minsan, you are jumping into conclusions. Base lang yun sa observations mo. Pero pag ina-applyan mo siya, o chinecheck mo, tinatry mong i-check kung tama ba yung na-come up mo na conclusion, minsan nagkakaroon ka ng mga pagkakamali. So, be aware lang on how you make your own conjectures or conclusions using inductive reasoning kasi hindi siya always accurate. Kasi masyadong broad nga yung conclusions mo based lang sa yung observations. I hope you understand the lesson today about inductive reasoning.